Hi everybody, I'm Sifu Joel Ledlow, Evolution JKD. Uh, this is an interview with an artist, and today I am joined by Saz, and he is going to introduce himself. Yeah, so my name is Stefan Azoulay. Uh, a lot of people in Winnipeg uh, call me Saz. It's kind of my nickname around here. But I'm a ballet dancer. I currently dance with Royal Winnipeg Ballet. I'm a soloist. Ninja Cat. And uh, yeah, from Australia. Been in Winnipeg about six years, so started dancing when I was young. My dad's a dancer. Went through ballet training, Danced in New York for a little while, Vegas for a little while, and now here, so, yeah. And I've been wanting to interview, because uh, our family has a connection with Royal Winnipeg Ballet, and I've been wanting to do it, and we were actually in an event together, and uh, we just sat down, and I was like, holy shit, dude, like, I gotta have you on, because it's, mm -hmm. having a ballet dancer, I have some formal training in ballet, but that just makes me appreciate what he does. Uh, it, it's a, a phenomenal thing, and it just gives me a little bit of insight, and that's why I want to share this. So whatever you do as a person, uh, he's going to have some really cool insight, and I have some questions here. Uh, see, I did bring my glasses, because at this point, I'm going to start reading things with glasses anymore. So I'm going to start off with something a little bit silly, because it relates to me, and one of the reasons why I, I was... Uh, not a very successful ballet dancer. My arms, my elbows don't actually lock. Um, so when you're doing this as a male dancer, uh, and you can see we get mind all lock, that's kind of a big deal, isn't it? Um, and, and I don't have I don't have the guns to to like just muscle up uh, a, a dancer and hold them up for prolonged periods of time because, uh, like we're going to talk about that and shoulder stability because we were discussing this and he's got a really cool video where he's doing uh, power cleans um, with one hand. So whoosh, boom, clean and jerk and all the way up to here because he's a dancer and he needs to go in here. So Saz, what about the, the need to have your elbows lock for that, that bone alignment, but also uh, how important is shoulder stability for uh, a dancer, a, a ballet dancer? Basically like when we, when we start training, uh, when we first, start doing lifts when we're young everyone just says just lock your arms out you know that's just like just get them up there and lock your elbows and that's kind of <laughs> because at that point you don't have the strength to mm -hmm. not do that and at a certain point that it just becomes automatic you always just use you know kind of your full body to do the lift and then once you're up there you kind of lock your arms so you don't have to muscle through it and then after that it's just stability um that being said uh, there is a lot of lifts where you can't lock your arms out mm -hmm. and uh, you like it, they're much more exhausting yeah. than, you know, the lifts that let's say just like a, a normal press, which just means all the way up mm -hmm. is quite easy. It's actually an easy lift. Yeah. And um, then you get a lot of help. You get a lot of help from, uh, from the partners, the, the yeah. women that you're dancing with, uh, or sometimes there's men you're dancing with. Uh, as you're doing that and you're doing the lift, they do a whole lot to get it up there. So you're not just picking up dead weight uh, for, for a dancer. It's not, Ugh! at least I hope not. Uh, you're currently, you just got back in town from, uh, no, you're about to go back out. You just Both, finished yeah, a show yeah. here. You were on tour before, and this is with The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. And <clears throat> what, do you have a big lift in there that is, that would be a difficult one to do? Um, yeah, like in the last part of her, there is, uh, it's not too difficult, but it's, uh, it's not easy. It's a, basically a full lift where, um, the goal is basically just lying flat mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a bit of a wider kind of grip, mm -hmm. um, but she's just above the head and basically she like, she comes at you, she turns around and she kind of like, she doesn't jump into it too much. It's, uh, she kind of does a nice plie and you go up together. Um, but it's, it has like, there has been a couple times where the coordination's a little off mm -hmm. and <laughs> that makes it a lot more difficult. So it goes from being a relatively, you know, easy lift to a very, very hard lift if yeah. it goes wrong. So that just shows like how important the coordination is. Now, a lot of people on here, uh, you're going to be martial artists and, and that's fine. But what he's talking about is something that we do in Jeet Kune Do and, and all the martial arts training that I've done is the awareness that you have to have, uh, two big key aspects, I'll probably lose one of these, but uh, awareness and uh, sensitivity, that mm -hmm. sensitivity of being there. Uh, and he's doing this all on stage in front of uh, an audience and kind of each, and then you're moving from theater to theater and as much as they try to make everything kind of the same, 
do you find that each show is unique uh, and individual and you have to sort of fit into that? And this, so there's all the things, just like if you were in a fight, um, you know, you do all of your training in, in, uh, in the, with the company, he does, but then coming on a stage, like how much, uh, how much does awareness and sensitivity to being able to feel the other dancer's movement, how vital is that to you as, as a professional ballet dancer? I mean, it's insanely important. Because, yeah. like, no two shows are ever going to be the same. No, like, there is never going to be a back-to-back -back show, even if it's the same production. It's never going to feel the mm -hmm. same um, because it's it's live. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, uh, there's so many factors and moving parts. And um, if you're not, like, really in the moment uh, with your partner, then that's when things go wrong. You know, that's, that's when mistakes happen or, you know, coordination goes off. And if it goes off, you have to be... And, you know, aware enough to fix it in the moment. You don't have time to think about it. And that's going to be really difficult as well because you have to understand, yes, it's choreographed, but you're talking about you have to take this choreography and fit it into maybe a different stage and your entrance is a little bit different because the off stage uh, is different. And, you know, maybe you go off stage right and then you come in stage left, but how you get around there uh, is different uh, from theater to theater. Uh, so you have to always adapt into that. And that's going to be crazy because everybody sees like pristine, perfect. But then where are you in the through line of the story and something went off or a prop fails for you? Know, it's always something that comes in there and you have to then change into that uh, and coming into it is, is in there. I think people would be surprised how much is not in our control. Yeah. Because... Uh, Realistically, you and the steps are the only thing you can control. There's props, there's costumes, there's music, uh, there's lighting cues. I mean, you could go on stage and there could be no lights, and then then what do you do? You know? No. You, I actually saw. Um, they always do. They're coming up pretty soon. Uh, doing uh, the Nutcracker, mm -hmm. and it's something that a lot of ballet companies do. They do it at RWB because it's it's a really wonderful thing. Uh, for the community, so they bring in a lot of the kids and uh, the dancers for um, the the kids who dance at RWB, but also a lot of other guests and stuff. It's a really cool for the whole city to come into. There was one that I was watching, and it music cut, and it's like I saw, and they're on stage with little kids and and everybody else in there, and so all of a sudden you see all of the company members just sort of reach out mentally to each other and then sort of figure out where we're going and then waiting for it. And then the music came back on and everybody sort of got back into it and then came through there. So that I've seen him do that. Uh, actually, I don't know if you were on stage for that uh, part. That, that was a very traumatic experience. <laughs> were you on stage for that one? Yeah. So it was like, that was everybody up there. Like the last show, uh, when we did it recently during COVID. Yeah, it was yeah. during COVID. And then there was a huge, you, we had all these things in, and that yeah. turned out to be the last show. Yeah. But there was... Uh, because of COVID, uh, we we found out that morning that the orchestra wasn't going to be able to play. So we like scrapped together the recordings and the cues were wrong. Oh, and, that's uh, what it was. I had totally forgotten that. So yeah. that, that, which is a whole other awareness thing yeah. of you going with a live orchestra, which is ideal um but if you're here do you have your own orchestra that travels with you or do you pick up a new orchestra when you're in a new city yeah so depending on the show uh if if it is supposed to be live music then we we never travel with musicians um so if we're in winnipeg we have wso mm -hmm. if we go to nac we use their orchestra victoria we use their orchestra for nutcracker when we tour uh and then usually since i've been with the company any other place has just been to recording so that's more live factoring things that come in there and so much more that you have to be juggling in this yeah. scripted, choreographed, everything is, well, you rehearse this whole thing, but and yet you have so many things that you're trying to keep at your goal is to do this and then perform on top of that, which has got to be insane of doing it. Uh, I'm going to go into some of my questions yeah. because I know there's some... Uh, we we talked about that. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit. When we were talking before, Australia, and I was like, well, how'd you get to Canada? And he's like, well, I didn't actually start in Canada because you went to New York. Yep. And 
sort of this is a two part question based on our what we were discussing uh, separately is one, how did you get here? Uh, I guess three things. Two is coming over overcoming adversity. And I, I'm pretty sure that, that the third one of who inspires you, and I'll come back to that question a little mm -hmm. bit more, but who sort of inspired you and got you through as, as a dancer to overcome that adversity in your, in your journey? Yeah, so I'll, I'll give some context. Uh, I was in the Australian Ballet School, which is um, a very good school, but uh, they have multiple levels, and basically I got to right before the, the final level, and uh, I got basically kicked out or let go because of my the aesthetic of my legs. So ballet is very uh, intense when it comes to aesthetics and looks and all that stuff. It's, it's all about a line. It's all about how you look. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of um, things on there. I couldn't do it very well because I have like crappiest point ever on the planet, um, which is comical. But yeah, so yeah, so, so basically you were you were aspiring to this. And how old were you at this time? Either seventeen or eighteen, which is about for a male dancer, kind of when you're going to be jumping into that next level. Yeah. And you were looking at like, hey, this is my whole. This is where I'm going with my my life, and this is what I want to do with my career. And yeah, at that time, it was <clears throat> ballet school. You know, it was just finishing school and then it would have been a year after that I would have then started looking for company jobs or whatever. So you basically had someone saying, hey, all of your hopes and dreams just yeah. screw you. Yeah. Uh, that's um, So how did you overcome that? I, by fluke chance, there was this uh, audition for this place in New York. Uh, it was uh, Joffrey basically was the name of the place. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any plans or options to be honest with you. I just went and did it. And I got in, and then I went to New York. <laughs> and, that's, and you were, so 18 at yeah, this time? I would have been either 17 or 18. 17 and, or 18 and going to New York to yeah. fluke coming up with an opportunity. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was the only option because I didn't really look for anything else. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, my motivation to say it was kind of tanked. So, I just went with it, and it ended up being the best thing that could have happened. Uh, when I got to New York, this is guy called Brian McSween who just like a huge kind of mentor coach uh, mm -hmm. figure and it just changed everything. Now did he teach you directly or was... Yeah, yeah. yeah. so he mm -hmm. we worked together a lot uh, like four shows that we did mm -hmm. um, at Joffrey but like he did a lot of coaching and um, it was just it was insane how like at that point of my I guess training or career or whatever, yeah. just everything changed. It was like, it was just you have someone uplifting you yeah, instead of was... instead of saying you don't meet what we want, yeah. which which happens uh, with coming into things. But so you you went there, and then did you? So then that was still schooling, and then you graduated. Yeah. So it was basically like a when I went into it, it was really supposed to be like more training, but it ended up being kind of like a a bridge between training and professional life because we had mm -hmm. a little, there was a little company, studio company there and we did a bunch of touring and the performance opportunities were just insane for me. So I just was always, always like doing in really intense stuff, performing like crazy and uh, just, yeah, it was crazy. And then gaining all of that skill yeah. that we were just talking about being on stage, uh, all that awareness and learning and having mentors guide you yeah. and, and having that which is really important. I mean, I think everybody sees uh, someone at the end result, whether they're, they're a ballet dancer or a martial artist, uh, you know, or a painter or something like that. I guess there's flukes out there who can just do it. But to really see someone perform well, there's usually a process going into it. And there's usually someone who's mentoring and guiding you. I know I've had lots of people do that for me. And you've had the same. Then that helped propel you into what was your first quote unquote Professional. Yeah, so it would have been the job in Vegas was for a ballet company called Nevada Ballet Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I basically got really lucky. They needed guys. I sent my stuff. I told them I, I don't have the money to like come there and audition. So here's my video material. Um, and it was, uh, that's really strange for uh, getting a job in the ballet world. 
usually that you have to go and audition. So yeah, they want to they want to see you yeah. and talk to you, yeah. and you were like, I can't do that. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> luckily, I had the right connections, and they were all kind of my mentors were friends with him, and so you know, it was good references and whatnot. But um, yeah, I got I got lucky and I got to Vegas, and then it was just again another kind of catapult in experience and opportunities and. And then you go from Vegas to Winnipeg? Yes. And then you've been here for how yeah, long? So this is my sixth season, so just sixth over, season? Yeah, five nice. months. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. So I actually have a picture, uh, I think it was after Nutcracker, mm -hmm. but years ago, years ago, uh, with the kids. And they do again, it's it's a sort of a community thing, and they come out and after performing uh, and being all sweaty, it's sort of like, <laughs> pat yourself, don't mess up your, your makeup, um, and uh, come out and sit and sign autographs and take pictures with kids, and they did that for uh, both of my kids, and, and now you, know, you see them. Um, yeah, and then Elliot was on, uh, Quinn, I don't think he's been on stage, but Elliot was on stage at some point, which he always loves. It's always great. And then um, I am going to say, say one of the things. So my son is... Yeah, yes, he's in martial arts, but he's also in dance. Right now, he's focusing on jazz, mostly because he does have ballet. And my wife, Catherine, did um, Romeo and Juliet. Mm -hmm. Sass was in that as well. And uh, so we got to come in, and one of the big things we wanted to do was bring our son in. Catherine wanted to bring Elliot in so he could see what professional male dancers because he's surrounded by women at, the, at this point uh in his school and he sees women dancing but not seeing a lot of guys and it's impressive if you have never seen professional ma men uh doing ballet dancing it is phenomenal the raw athleticism that is then shaped and cultivated into seemingly effortless movements and i can tell you what looks like effortless is usually not what's your favorite ballet move that just geeks you out like when you do this you feel like this is this is me doing ballet like if someone's like your favorite move like when you do it it just makes you feel empowered i guess like what's your favorite i would one? say like double tours which, double tours uh a, a tour is just like a 360 so the double tour is 720 you're going you want to you jump up and you go around and then land but they do it i when i was doing ballet class we were doing double tours but then it was like okay now don't stick your butt way out um yeah, like, that, that's the other thing is is you're supposed to take uh, off and, and and land in what we call fifth which is basically your feet like this um so you, you take off from here you do two spins and you land like this and uh when <laughs> Like some crazy training, what they do is they'll they'll put their foot against your foot and go, okay, go. And you have like you know two guys squishing your feet together. You have no no wiggle room for anything, and you just have to boom, go seven. Go up and yeah. and down. Which is another thing. Uh, I've been doing this actually with. It's always funny to do uh, spotting mm -hmm. uh, and martial artists. If you don't know how to spot, like you better work on it. And ballet is all about spotting and how important is spotting in dancing well there's two i guess massive reasons for spotting spotting is basically you know when you bring your head back to the front one is so you don't get dizzy because mm -hmm. if you're doing a bunch of turns and you don't spot you're gonna get if you do that dizzy. double tour and you whip around as fast as he does uh, coming out and, and back down like it makes me dizzy thinking about it yeah so <clears throat> that's number one number two is really uh uh just having an awareness of where you are, you know. So if you if you do a bunch of spins and you don't spot, you have no idea where you are in terms of the front, you know, or the audience, or wherever you're supposed to be. Um, and so it's so, keeping you keeping you facing. So if I want to be facing the audience here, then I want to look that way, and then that way you end in the same exactly, position. Yeah. Boom, boom, you're back, you know. Yeah. So. So um, it would be kind of funny if you're like, yeah, and spin, 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 and then everybody's like, oh, wait, sorry, you're, you're leaving yeah. the wrong way. <laughs> uh, so coming that way would be... So there's a lot of little technical things in what he does uh, every day that are mm -hmm. cultivated, and you just have to work on it, and then as an artist, you have to have someone inspire you. So there's a little bit of philosophy that we were talking about this past. Time. In martial arts, you're going to have lots of philosophy, and I think in everything, they're sort of coming through. 
uh, and one of the things that we were talking about was when I took dance class, and it, again, it goes into what Saz and other uh, male dancers do in a ballet, is you are supposed to be, you're expected to be unbelievably strong and skilled as a performer. And when you're doing a party, when you're doing a partner dancing, uh, I remember doing it and they, they're like holding on. And it's like the freaking hardest thing to do is hold uh, a dancer on point and then walk around them. And when you see, and I remember seeing watching ballet dancers do this and it looks like nothing. It looks like absolutely nothing, which is the whole point. The philosophy that I remember from ballet class, and it's not, it, it's fucking hard is what it is. It's super, super hard. Because on top of that, you're just supposed to, they're supposed to be like, she's so beautiful and she's so lovely. And there's an afterthought. Oh yeah, and he's very handsome. Um, so that's going in there. Uh, what are some of the other philosophies that, that you sort of resonate with you that are passed on in that, in that, uh, whether it was, I guess, in, in a classroom setting or in a company setting that you sort of have and, and carry with you. Um, well, specifically for partnering, something that uh, the same guy from before, Mr. McSween, would always say is know the lady's steps. So what that means is when, you know, when you, whatever, you're partnering mm -hmm. uh, in a part of the, the best way to know, you know, where their weight needs to be is to know their steps. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, it makes a huge difference as opposed to just like in your in your brain thinking, okay, now I'm going to hold her here, I'm going to lift here. You know, an easy way to make it graceful and make it really truly one one unit. I mean, that sounds like it's a little bit deeper than just like I know what her choreography is. It sounds like it's understanding how she takes those steps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you're really having to reach out again. We're going back into that awareness and and coming into it that's going to be phenomenal just the the amount of processing that you have to go through to then do not just your own movement but then fitting your movements into learning her movements and then fitting your movements into hers yeah yeah it's, there's a lot going on and you gotta i don't know you have to approach it the right way otherwise it's not gonna it's just won't work you know and if it does sometimes it works and it doesn't look quite right you know like it's no. It's it's not easy. <laughs> do you ever do you ever do a move? Uh, do you ever do a move and be like, "Wow, that felt really freaking awesome!" And then someone's like, "No, says that was really not that good." We have some notes all the time. for you. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, "I'm amazing." Uh, no, we've got yeah. some notes for you on yeah. that movement. It wasn't very good. You're like, "Oh shit." Um, There's always something in ballet, you know, like what your hand looks like, or your feet, or you think you. Did this thing and your leg was super high and it was actually down here you know yeah. like it's, <laughs> i guess it goes into another thing how do you how do you do for yourself how do you keep that mental health i guess because everybody is in your world hypercritical because you are performing mm -hmm. and everything is always going to do that how do you mentally take on hey i'm i i'm going to take these notes and i'm going to train for it i mean does it feed you in someone's like Hey, do, do, do you need to do this? Oh, is, is it like a challenge for you, or do you compartmentalize it? I don't know. Like, how yeah. do you how do you take in that and maintain that higher level so that you can continue to be um, a positive, I guess, in your in your journey? Sounds corny and stupid, but you just do your best <laughs> in the <laughs> sense that there's so many things to think about all the time, and you're never going to. Uh, you know, like you're not going to wake up the next day and it's going to be fixed. It doesn't work like that. Um, so I, I personally, I just try to take in all the information and I just do my best to try and apply it all mm -hmm. whenever I can. And are you, you still, know? so you're still thinking about growing oh, yeah. and becoming better. So the day you stop thinking about that is the day you should retire. Hmm, nice. I, I'd agree with, with that as well. As a martial artist, I mean, my school's called evolution for a reason. Uh, that you're going to continue to grow uh, as a person and as an artist as you express. And then I guess, uh, do you find that your training has changed over the years? Yeah, absolutely. Like I how mean, you approach it and what you do? I've always tried to train from a, uh, a quote-unquote, you know, safe approach for my body. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of things you can do for the ballet aesthetic that aren't necessarily good for your body. Yeah. You know, structurally. So I always try to dance within my own range. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, relatively speaking, I've had no major injuries in my career. 
Um, all of them have usually just been like overuse of something from a production, or, mm -hmm. you know, so some chronic buildup. But yeah, so I always try to approach it with longevity in mind. Yeah, that's for sure. And then going to, so I'm going to get some of the other ones because there's another one I'm going to go into. So, yeah. you know, distance and timing is the awareness and the sensitivity. You're, you're talking about with the lift, the yeah. understanding where you are and you put in there the knowing your your partner's steps mm -hmm. with the philosophy and how that does in and that helps you with the distance and timing to be in the proper place because that's a like constant for you of yeah. being knowing and calculating distance and timing of everything and doing your 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 pirouettes or tours or, or lifts everything you're doing um <laughs> it's like the the overlap i've heard where football players have done ballet dancing i uh i have absolutely where I'm nowhere remotely close to his level, but having taken ballet class, wow, I found so many things beneficial. Uh, like I, when I started really training in, in martial arts, like really, really training it with the punchy, kicky kind of beat the crap out of people portion of it. Um, and seriously, I got into kickboxing and uh, I found because of the, the way that, that I learned to extend it was like, oh, I can kick you in the head. And I had the flexibility because I had worked on flexibility and I am spotting, made it really easy to do stuff. So I like to kick people in the head. I was, I was known for head hunting uh, and, and I like to kick my, I kick my friends in the head. So sensitivity, for, for me, like we do a drill called Chi Sao and it's, it's, it's coming in and it's sensitivity awareness. And it is to me very much so like being with a partner because there's so many things that you do. It's not just around the waist, but then you're switching over here to this hand. And then you've got all these transitions to everything, depending on what the choreography is and what those steps are and how you move over here and you grab hands this way and then you grab hands. And then the, the transitioning from maybe a lift into a, a pose and then coming over here and then transitioning in and so that she can do pirouettes and then you assist. There's all of this give and take constantly this ebb and flow of that kinetic energy going between two athletes who are moving in what appears to be graceful, gentle movements. It's, I, I, it's not graceful and gentle on the, you make it look that way, but it's a lot of like power in there from both of you, isn't it? Uh, He's gonna tell say no. Some, well, okay, yeah, so I wouldn't say power, but I would say like, so so much of partnering is the two people doing the right things at the right time. You know, there's so much. He says that, but he's also shredded. Yeah. And I've seen <laughs> I've seen them in in thing where where the guys and this is one of the things where we brought my son in and he was just like whoa, and I was like whoa, I was like look at that, and and you're you're and I'm like my terminology for ballet is terrible. Uh, <laughs> where you I, I don't remember everything, and it's French, and my French is horrible. Uh, or non-existent, uh, where you come up and then you do uh, split jumps. You, you, they sort of like gracefully run, but it's not really a run, it's a ballet run, because uh, it looks really nice. And then, and then they jump up and their, their legs split in front and back. Well, but they're splitting like this, so the feet are going above their hips. Uh, so one, I can't do that anyway, I'm more like this when I do it, but they're coming up. And then the second thing is, is they're jumping, you're jumping up like so high. Like it was watching, and then they're doing it in pairs. So there's this challenge mode um, between you and the other guys in the company where it's like, oh, and it's like, who's going to get higher on this one? Well, let's do another one. Yeah. And do you find that, because uh, I've trained with a lot of really great uh, people, uh, fellow martial artists, we train together and we learned so much together, whether we're grappling or punching or kicking or, or doing whatever, do you find that you're challenged uh, with the other guys in the company in, in a great way? Is it, is it sort of that, that fun? Yeah, absolutely. Fun, absolutely. Like, yeah. way to get into it? The guy, like, <clears throat> at the end of class, sometimes we all just, you know, fuck around and just do whatever trick. And by trick, we just mean, like, fancy ballet step. Um, like, you know, we, for example, you could do a triple tour, which is... Another 360 at the end of that 720. So it's like, I can't even think about that. Like, it yeah. doesn't seem <laughs> physically possible to do it. Uh, I, I did at one point get to triple pirouettes on one side and doubles to the other side. And that was like the the height of, of for me. I don't want to say that mine were really pretty either, but I could spin around and land in something resembling 
you know, fourth position. But to be able to jump up in the air and spin around uh, and, and hold everything and look pretty at the same time just sounds like a, a not not realistic thing to do as a human being. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's it's pretty crazy what we can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, there's, there's some insane things in there. Uh, so I think we got through a lot of a lot of cool stuff, and then we added some other cool things that I, I didn't know about. Um, I, I want to go with two things. Mm -hmm. One is uh, we had talked, and you had said, "I wish everybody could take a ballet class." Now I just shared I got things from it, but what what is it about a ballet class that you wish the average person, so the people watching, what would you like? What do you think they could get out of it? Or what would you like them? To get out of it or what would you tell them they could get out of a ballet class i mean there's so much uh i think the biggest thing is just uh learning about your own body you know like even like basic basic ballet um is so good for body awareness and like actually making your body do these things um is i, I mean you're sure it's a good workout whatever but like you're really just learning how to move your body like that's that's the, the coolest thing about it and then there is music you know, so you, we're not just doing it nonchalantly, that we're doing it to a certain timing as mm -hmm. well, which is is a very unique thing if you if you separate it from, you know, dance or whatever. To move your body with, you know, like, intended musicality, that, that's a pretty awesome thing, yeah. you know. Um, and, and that exists outside of dance, like, you know, like tempo in, in, in weight training or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like... So two down, one we, up. You know, we like, do this, and I say, like, you really hit on... So if you're a martial artist, I highly recommend you take a ballet class for the two things that Sash just did. One is that, that body awareness. So if you're aware, so if I'm self-aware, then you can be self-correcting. Mm -hmm. uh, would you agree with that? Absolutely, and, and, yeah. So, and then you do get this super mindfulness of, like, oh, my arm has to be in this position, and I have to feel as I'm going through here and there's so much to get into how you're moving through um, and the the second thing that you did it, was, it happens to me when I come in with an artist they, they geek me out and then I like <laughs> I get I was like there's 10 things you said uh, the 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 body awareness and then oh the broken rhythm so in martial arts you, Bruce Lee is all broken rhythm right so you can't actually break rhythm until you can establish rhythm and that musicality of coming in and timing everything in there, it's really giving you something to work your body with. So as a martial artist, you have this self-awareness coming in as a doing a ballet class and increased athleticism as well, like tons of learning how, like I remember, uh, this is a weird one, sorry. This muscle, mm -hmm. when you pop, let's see your groin in here and you're like, what are you talking about? And there's just because you hold yourself in a different way and all of a sudden you're like, Poof! Oh my gosh, like I didn't realize I was using this. You find different muscles uh, that you just use a whole lot more, and that's more of the awareness of what you can do with it. So you're accessing more potential, which is kind of funny that uh, a lot of people I think would consider ballet really restrictive, but yeah, it, like at the same time, it opens you up to more stuff. There's so many like intrinsic muscles in the body that people have no idea about mm -hmm. on, a, on a surface level, you know? like. When, when you think of ballet, you probably think, oh, they must have insane strength, and you must think, oh, they can probably, you know, squat X amount of pounds or whatever. Well, sure, maybe we can, but realistically, the muscles that are most important to us are the stabilizers, the intrinsic muscles, uh, the, you know, like things like pelvic floor, and on an average day, people have no <laughs> relationship with those muscles, you know? Like, yeah. They, they, just, they just don't exist on this you're in whatever uh, but they're so important for a dancer you know that's and, really well. and it's a, a, a coordination of muscles yep. of how to use the whole body if you're lifting you don't just lift here it's always mm -hmm. kind of everything and coordinating um, ev everything you're moving with your body and even if you're doing just an arm movement you've got everything else to stabilize mm -hmm. through everything so there's a ton in there and I would challenge you to go see a local ballet performance. Um, hopefully you, could, you have a professional company or if one comes to on tour, definitely go see one. Uh, if you live in a city that does have a professional company, I would highly recommend you go and see something uh, because they're really unique. And, and I always find for me, when I come into a ballet, 
it, it takes me a little bit and then I go off into the world and you, you kind of think, well, I'm never going to, like, I'm not, oh, no, I'm there. I'm okay. I'm, I'm going. I think and, people are always surprised with their experience at the ballet. You know, for, yeah. Like, the, I had someone, a friend of mine came and saw Handmaid's Tale and uh, it was the first time they've ever seen ballet, which I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't have suggested Handmaid's as the first one because it's pretty intense. And right off the bat, someone is like hanging on a noose and he, I was with him last night and he said, I was, I was locked in. Someone's dead in the opening scene <laughs> and uh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, sure. All right. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so the other thing, we, you were just mentioning before that uh, you had, well, you can tell us what you did last night and what that's going to do because as a ballet dancer, as, a, as an athlete, you do sort of have a uh, expiration date to be able to perform mm -hmm. at this level, just the athleticism, just like a, a football player uh, or a basketball player. There's a certain point when, you, when you're going to have to retire, and it's always an interesting thing. Uh, and I've talked to some of the other people who are um, uh, my age and who have retired, and it's always an individual thing. But not that you want to or need to do that right now, but what are you thinking about afterwards? And, um, you know, do you just go open up a ballet school? Do you go work at a company, which a lot of people do that because they want to stay into it. Uh, but some people just go that way and uh, do something else entirely. What do you, what did you do last night? Yeah. And how does that relate to your plans uh, for quote unquote trans, I guess transitioning out? Transition, instead of retiring, transitioning into something else. So I put a uh, like seven course tasting menu for two of my buddies who are chefs uh, and a wine song. I was a buddy and their, their partners. So it was at my place and I just went to town. And yeah, I mean, I've always loved food. I've always been in mm -hmm. the food industry in some shape, way or form. Uh, mostly at the beginning out of necessity because I wasn't... Starving artist. Yeah. Exactly. No. Um, but since I came to Winnipeg, it was really by by choice. Oh. Uh, and a lot of dancers in the company, like, they take courses through university or, you know, like, if a couple people have second jobs. The idea of going to uni right now just doesn't really excite me that much. So, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I did six years of undergrad yeah. <laughs> at two universities um, with, like, three or four majors. And I graduated, I was like, I'm done. Like, I don't yeah. ever need to go back to. But I guess it's an interesting thing. Like, w when you're doing that, for me, I went and got my, I guess I did get another couple of degrees, but they were all martial arts. So I went, I got my black belt degree. Um, I, you know, I become a, a full instructor in Jeet Kune Do. I, I've also done other training that has supported that. And then been running my own school. So you're wanting to, you've been educating yourself, I guess, with this, with being a chef and, yeah. and wanting to take that into some shape, form or fashion yeah, so as you transition? Yeah, I was, uh, by f there was a lot of things that happened, but October, basically last year, I got on board with opening a restaurant in Winnipeg. Nice. Um, so that basically was from December to July. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, January to July, uh, to July, yeah. Which was crazy because I was still dancing at the time. So I was, I was doing like two full time jobs and I was basically managing a restaurant and then, you know, also being right. a, in the company. So that was insane. But the experience was awesome. You know, because yeah. I've always, at some point, I will want to open up my own spot. I don't know. And just gaining that experience yeah. from doing it with somebody else and getting all that, just giving you more information. Yeah. Which is another way that you, you can really train yourself outside of a Absolutely. university experience. Yeah. You know, some things, you know, you can't become a doctor just like on the street, but, um, but you kind of need some schooling for that. But there are other ways in that life experience is really important. And you're not just doing it kind of like half ass, like, oh, it's just me cooking mac and cheese at the house. Uh, you're with, you're, you're making dinner for people who are professional chefs. Yeah, like both of them, like have been at Michelin star restaurants. That's not a joke. Yeah, <laughs> they're, so they're, that's coming in, and I guess, and I guess it goes into, into that excellence that you look for yourself, at being the best that you had said earlier. I, right now in ballet, you want to be the best and and follow your passion with that, as you did, uh, doing that 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 audition to get it to New York, 
uh, and then doing the audition to get to Vegas. And then now you're here and you're still challenging yourself and still growing as a ballet uh, dancer, but as an artist, but also looking at how you can transition into being another artist. Because if you haven't seen any of the cooking shows out there, uh, chefs do not, they are, it, I mean, plating is a thing, right? Because it's, it's how you plate the food and how you pair the food with, with a wine. This goes go best with this wine. And you're doing all that and exploring and growing that right now so that you could continue to be an artist, uh, which I think is really phenomenal that you don't have to just be an artist in one thing. You could be an artist in, in everything. You can be an athlete uh, and just be an athlete who is doing martial arts or doing ballet. Then you can also be an artist who is expressing themselves through martial arts, through ballet or through cooking or music or whatever you want to do. Uh, I think those are all really cool things. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a huge, like, second creative outlet, you know, like it's, yeah. and I think no matter what in my life, I'm always going to have something that's creative. Like that's, even when I retire, there's no way I'm, you know, like it's. I was going to say, let's wrap this up and any final thoughts. And I yeah. think that <laughs> nails it right there yeah. of always having a creative outlet. That's it's, super. It's so important. I mean, as a. As a human, how can you not? <laughs> yeah, and it, it, that right there. As a human, you should have a creative outlet. Yeah. I think that is really, wh however good you are at it, I think that really puts everything into, into perspective of having a creative outlet. Sass, thank you so much for this. Uh, I hope all of you enjoyed it. If you have uh, questions, comments, uh, put, them in the, put them in the comments below. And uh, we'll get back to you. All right. Bye, everybody.